This conference will now be recorded. So I, I made you presenter, Mark. So why don't you introduce cool. yourself to everybody? Right on. Um, yeah, Michael, thanks very much. Um, my name's Mark DiGiorgio. Uh, I'm a, a founder of a company called TechStack. I've been in technology companies my entire career, which has been about 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm delighted to spend a little bit of time uh, with you today. Uh, Michael invited me to spend a little bit of time with you to talk a little bit about LinkedIn best practices. So I've got a pretty action-packed agenda. I'm basically just gonna dump as much information as I can in an hour, but um, I'll pause for questions as we go, if you have any. Um, am I a qualified practitioner in LinkedIn? Uh, I don't do this for a living, but I do use LinkedIn for a living and I've honed uh, best practices over the last, uh, not quite 20 years as, um, as a um, uh, user of LinkedIn. Uh, I think I started with uh, LinkedIn in like 2003 or four or something like that. Um, it's a really important tool for our business and there's a lot of things you can do with it to help improve uh, your business outcome. Um, I've spent my career uh, growing technology companies from pre-revenue to 20 million and from 10 million to 30 million. So I've been in all stages of company growth as a CEO, chief revenue officer, chief marketing officer. Um, and I would like to share with you some of the stuff that's worked for us and maybe some of the stuff that doesn't work. And uh, we can engage in a dialogue and go from there. Sounds great. And then, um, just so you know, the people on the phone here are people that have marketing responsibilities for MSPs. And we have this group that we get together every couple of weeks and we cover best practices that we do ourselves. But I'm thrilled that you're going to join us because I kind of I want to make sure that we're getting kind of subject matter experts that are kind of not uh, us just talking to each other all the time. So I appreciate you spending time with us today. With that, I'll shut up and let you, uh, let you, looks like you got a lot to cover here. Yeah, it's a fair bit. I, uh, I started putting an agenda together, uh, Michael, and uh, I think this is about half the topics <laughs> I came up with um, in an hour. Um, I'll whiz through the stuff. Um, I will pause. If you do have any questions, just uh, holler. Yeah, I'll, meet, I'll um, meet yourself and just jump in. Yeah, that'd be great. Perfect. Um, so with that, why don't we get started? Um, I'm going to give, provide a little bit of context here really, really fast. I, I, you know, we'll, we'll spend 99% of our time talking about LinkedIn tips and tricks, but I want to provide some context. Um, we've, we've entered a really interesting period. Um, I think the last 10 years in general have been very interesting with regards to sales and marketing and, and trying to market a business to business business. Um, the adoption of technology, social platforms, it's completely changed marketing, completely mm -hmm. changed in the last 10 years. However, in the last two years, something else has really happened. Um, so as I like to say, there was never a more challenging time for sales reps. I think when we were going through all that COVID stuff uh, in 2020, um, you know, it was, a bit, it was a little bit tricky. I think MSPs got the, the you know, best share of it because a lot of uh, trigger events, technology driven trigger events, uh, a lot of interesting movements from on prem to, to cloud and all this other stuff um, that could have driven uh, business decisions in your market. But there was also a general pes uh, pessimism uh, in amongst CEOs um, to spend money. So a lot of people went into cash preservation. Um, depending on, you know, it's industry specific, but a lot, a lot of companies went into cash preservation. Um, but we came out of that and we, here we are the 10th or uh, yeah, 10th month of 2021. And this, according to this PwC survey, which was earlier in the year, there's a general optimism out there. And I think we're seeing businesses looking to spend money again. So I, I wanna make sure that we all frame this conversation that it's guns a blazing, we are in, uh, it's basically full um, investment, full spend mode. And, and I think we need to keep that positive um, op and that optimism um, mm -hmm. when we go to market with our stuff. Um, the other thing I think, which is really important, it's this LinkedIn conversation. 
And this one's from McKinsey and Company. You know, you can look at this graph and analyze it. But basically what it says is that the majority of buyers, two thirds of them in fact, want remote human interaction actions or digital self-service. Um, that's kind of interesting uh, mm -hmm. for a few reasons. And I feel that a lot of companies haven't evolved their sales and marketing to adjust to virtual um, uh, selling and buying processes. Why I think it's particularly interesting for MSPs is that my limited knowledge of the MSP space is that the MSPs tend to be the best in their region. So their differentiation is I'm the best in the greater city of X. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're buying remotely, <laughs> it doesn't mean anything anymore. If, if the buyers want to buy remote and the handshake isn't what it's all about and you need to build uh, relationships virtually and you need to earn trust virtually and that's what mm -hmm. the buyers are saying they want, it doesn't matter if you're local. Um, you need other differentiation because there's going to be an MSP about a thousand miles away from you hunting down in your patch. And so you need to get, you need to start getting good and well practiced at remote selling. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's particularly interesting with this LinkedIn conversation. Third piece, context piece I want to put in front of you here. In the last 10 years, we've seen a complete change in how buyers buy. Um, buyer 2.0, we'll call them. Buyers mm -hmm. now educate themselves to a fantastically great degree before they engage with a potential vendor. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, use the analogy and it's been used before. I've been using it for 10 years. This is how long this stuff's been going on. Um, you know, but 20 years ago, if I wanted to buy a car, I go into the dealer. I have to learn everything about that car mm -hmm. from the dealer. I grab the, the spec sheet from the dealer. Um, and then I go through a prolonged sales process to buy a car. Now that doesn't mm -hmm. happen anymore. When you go to a car dealership, you're basically transacting. You've done mm -hmm. so much online research about that automobile. You probably know more about that, uh, purchase decision than the person selling you the car and that you're really just going in and bartering a price. And even the price you probably have good, um, public domain knowledge of what you can get and the lowest possible price, blah, blah, blah. So it becomes a transaction. I, I've seen this trend in the last 10 years where even with complex solutions like, um, um, you know, the MSP offerings out there, buyers are fully educated before they engage with you. And that's really important because you want to give them a platform for education. You want them to make sure they see you as a knowledgeable partner. And, and, and then the, the transaction's quick, and then there's an optimization post decision where you need to earn that customer over the long term, and then you swing into customer success mode. So that's where the sales transaction actually is. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that can be said about this, but this is a general trend uh, that we've seen in the last 10 years. And frankly, I've seen it accelerated in the last uh, year post COVID. Last piece I'm going to leave, leave you with before we jump into, in, into the LinkedIn tips and tricks. Um, only 3% of your target audience are actually in an active buying cycle. I agree with that. All right. So what do you do with the 97% that aren't? You've got to educate them. You've got to create awareness. You've got to be the person they call when they actually are ready to engage. Um, I don't know how many times I, I used to buy stuff all the time. I, I spent a million dollars on software products at my last uh, company. And uh, I, I, you know, let's say I wanted to buy a, a piece of technology for the company. Um, I would get hit from a salesperson. This person's not successful engaging me. Nine months later, I'm like, oh, who was that company again? Mm -hmm. oh, man. And then I forget, you know, I'm not, they, that salesperson wasn't constantly engaging me when I was ready to buy. And so LinkedIn becomes a great platform to make sure that your buyers know about you and you're still out there in the market and you're still offering great uh, advice and great counsel to companies of their like. So this is a really important thing. And LinkedIn becomes a great platform to educate and create awareness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna take a pause before I jump into the tips and tricks with LinkedIn. Any comments, questions, thoughts before I do? 
Actually, I'll jump in real quick just because you're cool. you're you're triggering a topic that's actually going to be the focus that we're going to be having in M and STP uh, going forward, particularly from the marketing standpoint. So I agree with everything you just you presented there too, and I just wanted to put an exclamation point on the last point, which was uh, we have to treat our marketing as if it's the digital equivalent of a discovery call, right? Because of exactly what you just said. It's so our thing we have to be thinking about is our marketing like uh, addressing people's objections to adopting security, right? Like what are the what are their big objections and how are we handling those? Two is how are we and I think you might get to this later, but how are we truly, you know, if we are if we are different and better than other MSPs, what tangible evidence can we give of that to clients and prospective clients so that in their education process, they're understanding our differentiation, right? So I think just what you have here on the slide is also says that we need to be marketing to the 97%. So when they do have a triggering event, pain event, that when they go to us, they're getting a different quality of messaging than they're getting from other MSPs as well. So I think, that's, I think, you, I think you're dead on right here. Yeah. Yeah, you you know, and one of the challenges I feel MSPs have is it it's largely it can be perceived as a homogenous service, which forces price pressures, right? So they just become right. the best value. The best value is the lowest price offering, which isn't where you want to be. Obviously, you want to add more value yeah. and education. Yeah, you just tr triggered another one too, which is what I've understood. I don't go to actually that big big was probably the first conference I've been to in years, and what I what I also believe is that the average MSP is becoming more average and the exceptional ones are becoming more exceptional. And what we're just talking about now is kind of what the exceptional MSPs are going to be doing because everybody's doing exactly the same thing, right? Seeing the same thing. We went to, they had these guys that were supposed to be thought leaders at that conference. And I, I hadn't heard anything new from those guys than I hadn't heard like three years ago, right? So I think what we have the opportunity to do is be better at executing on all the stuff you're talking about. And uh, I think you're I think you're dead on so far. Cool. Oh, good. yeah, sure, yeah. So let's hit it. You're, 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 yeah, let's hit it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm gonna leave you with like 20 things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you know, maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not, maybe you know it all this stuff already. Um, and that's okay. Um, but I, I'm going to share with you some of uh, some personal experiences and personal examples of what to do, not to do, what to look at, what to engage in, um, and uh, we can go from there. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got a couple images up here. Um, it's number one, my personal profile on LinkedIn, and number two, it's my company tech stack. Okay, so um, I think I've got around 3,000 connections. Tech stack has about 3,000 followers. Um, what's really, really important here is that, especially with MSPs, is that your personal brand is the equivalent of your company brand, okay? There needs to be a great consistency. Um, and MSP organizations, even the largest ones are that large, right? So most organizations are, you know, under, you know, let's call it a dozen, a couple dozen um, employees, they're not tens of thousands of employees. So it should be really easy to manage the message within your uh, team. And there should be great consistency with every team member that's associated to your company on LinkedIn. So you can see the little subtleties here that are really, really important. You notice under my name, I have a quick reference to my title, which, which is just, you know, as a it's a credentializing thing, right? So I, I can give myself a title because I started the company and it's, and it helps me get indoors sometimes, but just put it in your title, but then put in the thing that drives your purpose every day. And you'll notice better tools for B2B SaaS companies to punch above their weight. And you notice on the company page, punch above your weight. So you see the consistency between the company page and the personal brand, very, very important. The other thing is you can see in the banner, um, you should be using identical banners between the company page and you should be providing your employees with banners uh, for their personal page. And you can't force an employee to use um, your, your banner. 
but um, but you can provide it. And most, I'd say, 99% want to do the good thing and 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 create that consistency, uh, brand consistency, and that brand voice for the organization. You can create these in Canva, C A N V A dot com. If you've ever used the product, it's like the best thing on the planet. You can create um, you know banners and posts and visual elements and videos really really easily and very very cheaply um but you, you should definitely be doing that the other thing is make sure you have an about that gives some insight into what you are about um and i think you want to tie the business and and the personal together um and so just in, include that mix um i think that's really important just fill out these elements uh in your company uh or, or in your personal page and make sure you fill out the elements on your company page linkedin allows you to do lots of sections and you can add products and some other stuff um, but make sure um, you fill in as much as you can on on the personal and company page before we get started on anything in here any questions before uh, we move on no i was going to make one point here just for the sdp group too is the other thing i believe is one of the differentiating factors is indeed your owner and so I think we should actually look at, in part of your marketing plan next year, is what kind of personal brand for, like, I'm looking at Alex right now. Like, Doug is a very unique individual. And you'll find out when they go on discovery calls, people have different reactions to the owner than the salesperson. So I think a really big priority potentially for 2021 for all of us is making sure that we're making our owners rock stars and that their personal branding page is actually really potent we can come up with some parameters around that but I think that's I think that's one key differentiator yeah if I play on the Alex Doug uh, thing really fast uh, mm -hmm. Alex should have access to Doug's LinkedIn mm -hmm. profile because Doug won't yeah. probably do it um, <laughs> and, and Doug should freely give it up because Alex is going to become the voice yeah for Doug and so insist that you have access mm -hmm. to your owners uh, profile and manage it for them mm -hmm. Um, so what types of engagement? Um, you know, I, I just pulled a random kind of person outside of my network um, and then and blurred uh, the particulars, but um, you can engage with, with other human beings on LinkedIn in a number of ways. You can connect, you can follow, you can message. I put an asterisk next to that because uh, LinkedIn has some limitations around messaging people who are not in your network unless you have a specific version of, of LinkedIn, which we'll talk about later. You can like, you can comment, and you can view profile. Um, all of these uh, engagements create notifications in that person's um, LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. So when you view a profile, so if um, I, Mark, hit Michael's um, profile, Michael will see that Mark viewed the profile. A brain uh, synapse fires. Mm -hmm. And so Michael will take note of that. And when I hit Michael on another medium, like email, Michael's going to put two and two together. Mm -hmm. That's just how it works. Mm -hmm. Your brain can't fight it. It just fires off mm -hmm. synapse and tries to make connections all the time. That's how your brain grows. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, you know, this is all social media stuff, not just LinkedIn, but, um, but all, every single one of these creates a notification and they can all be used as, as ways to engage with people. You don't just have to connect with people. And I'll give you some examples why you might want to use different uh, methods. Um, so it's really about the dopamine hit. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, connect is great, but you know, nine out of 10 people won't accept your connection if you're a blind uh, connection request, because everybody on LinkedIn is sick and tired of those people shilling mm -hmm. new products. And I'll explain that later, but you don't want to be those people. But like, for example, if I really wanted to sell Michael a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. I would maybe not connect with them first. What I might do is do um, a view profile, I then might comment or like on a recent Michael post. I might follow Michael, mm -hmm. which which creates for, for Michael, like there's this like hierarchy that happens mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. All before I try to connect with Michael. 
when I then try to connect with Michael, he, I, I find two things work, either absolutely no message mm -hmm. or do a message like the one I have up here, which I've had great success with. Hey, uh, hi, Michael. Um, I share lots of great content about the MSP community. Maybe you'll be interested. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. trying to sell you anything. Just trying to connect with you. Um, mm -hmm. Those always work for me. Um, but I also get to carry around a big title. So that makes it a lot easier too. So it's mm -hmm. like, you, you know, there's other ways to engage than just trying to connect with people. In fact, I wouldn't even use, I wouldn't call connect the minimum uh, engagement. I would call it the maximum engagement. And I wouldn't even start with the connect. Um, I would start with other types of engagement. And um, and and all of them work. Okay. Um, any questions on that before I get going? Mm, okay. Good. Good. Okay. Types of engagement. Uh, LinkedIn gives you lots of really cool options for creating content. Uh, I mean, you know, add posts with photos, posts with videos, posts, uh, you know, event posts. You can write an article. Uh, there's there's tons of different ways to um, uh, create content on on uh, LinkedIn. Um, I'll give you some examples of what works and not work uh, does not work, and it's all about their algorithm or uh, short form algo. Um, the kids call it. Um, LinkedIn has a news feed like Facebook and Insta and all these other things. That news feed is highly, highly doctored. So the algorithm that puts one uh, article above another article is, is heavily influenced by a number of factors that are outside of your control. Um, LinkedIn has its own algo and it gets updated all the time. So some stuff will you know, do really, really well and some other stuff doesn't do well at all. And I'll give you some examples of, of real life uh, examples um, and I'll show you the comparison and engagement so this, personally, the stuff I found that has worked really, really well from an um, um, engagement standpoint um, is posts without links, <laughs> just text posts, no pictures, no links. And I'll give you an example of that. Mm -hmm. They work phenomenally well. They get spread so quickly. If you do put a post and you want a link to a blog article or like some other external reference, LinkedIn hates those. You need to put the link in the comments, otherwise you're going to get buried. Okay, and even they're starting to shut shut that down. But that put the link in the comment, not in the post. You'll get a better distribution of your 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 content than if you put the link in the post. Uh, but still, no link is the the maximum distribution. Um, you should tag people and your company in all the posts. You can use uh, hashtags, you can use the at and then include people um, or at include companies. Um, but hashtags and tagging are, are really important because that also uh, increases the uh, distribution. Um, if you do post with some sort of image, you can, I mentioned Canva already, it's really affordable. Um, it's a great way to create some pop uh, with whatever you're sharing, um, you can create you know, they have tons of templates. You can, you know, create really uh, professional looking images within a few mouse clicks. Um, they may not get the uh, algorithm distribution, but they do get a lot of uh, clicking or opening or click engagement. Uh, so Canva is a great way to like, you know, kind of boost the quality of your, your post. Um, people, like I found people love personal stories on LinkedIn. They love opinions. They love to hear about you, but just don't do the humble brag. Like nobody needs to do the, oh, I was broke 20 years ago and I worked really mm -hmm. hard and now I'm a billionaire. Nobody likes those posts, right? But so stay away from those, but they love, 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 love personal stories. Um, if you do put a link in um, from an industry article or your blog post, it will automatically grab a feature image uh, from that. And sometimes you can control it like on your blog post, but sometimes you can't. So just keep that in mind. Um, LinkedIn can host videos. 
so you can actually put videos on LinkedIn, not from Vimeo or from, um, you know, let's say a blog article that has a, a video embedded or your web page has a video embedded. Um, so you can put uh, videos on LinkedIn, but for whatever reason, LinkedIn suppresses the distribution of those. The only advantage of doing that is um, it will always get associated to your company page or your personal page. There's a section for content or videos, I can remember what it's called now, but it will always categorize and catalog whatever you uh, upload as articles and, and LinkedIn videos. So what I typically recommend is if there's, um, like I would recommend a, a frequently asked questions, like a FAQ or a what is, you know, whatever MSP name, like what is a tech stack uh, type post, Posted on blogs, there's great, great SEO. Posted on LinkedIn, same content, just put it into on two uh, mediums. Yeah. Okay. Just, I think they, they, can content. I add one one quick one in there too? Uh, I think yeah. one thing that I think is underutilized actually is posts about your clients. Oh, and yeah. I think the second thing that's underutilized and I'd like to see us do more of next year is like interviews, having a client and your owner in a video together. I don't see very many of those. I see, you know, frankly, I can think I can count on the, you know, I've seen maybe 10 in the last year. And I'd like to see all of us do do more of that too. Because again, you got to think about, you know, you want to be attractive, you want to be providing content to people that are potentially moving into a buying process, right? So what they care about is, you know, who are these people? Who are their clients? What have they produced for people just like me? And we can start to get, we can start posting stuff like that using your tips right here. Mark. And, and video content is super easy to produce now. Like you could do with your client a um, Zoom meeting or Teams meeting and just record that meeting as an MP4. And then if you go onto Upwork or Fiverr, you'll find tons of video editing. Um, uh, uh, contractors for 10 bucks, 20 bucks an hour, yeah. who will edit that thing for a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna have a really professional looking video um, mm -hmm. or an interview kind of video or a customer mm -hmm. testimonial video mm -hmm. um, um, that will have a great shelf life. And they're so easy to produce now. Um, and, and people have a greater tolerance for that kind of almost guerrilla style quality. Like it doesn't need to be top quality stuff. Mm -hmm um people are really consuming those one minute kind of soundbite videos um get them captioned um you know get them edited down get, you know remove the eyes and all that kind of stuff they're really affordable to uh, produce now yeah great idea michael thank you Okay, so here's two examples. Uh, I thought this would be really cool to share. So I went to the big, big thing. That's where I met Michael face to face uh, mm -hmm. on a month ago now, or a number of mm -hmm. weeks ago now. I don't yeah. know where time's going. Um, one's really boring. It's a blog article I wrote about my experience at Big Big. It's a great article, um, but it, um, it's kind of like, you know, whatever kind of stuff. 276 views of that article, which is a very low engagement for me. Um, you know, normally my engagements would be at around a thousand. Okay. Very, very low. Um, I love riding. My business partner loves riding. We went riding out into um, one of the national forests, uh, not far from uh, Scottsdale um, before one of the days at Big Big and I posted a picture saying, hey, great early morning ride. Can't wait to hang out with my friends. A big big look at the engagement mm -hmm. difference um mm -hmm. nearly the same like within a week uh, of each other same audience um one had a lot of views one did not um the reason why that is 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 likely because of the link in the um in in the uh, article or in the post excuse me um, that is the difference between the two. So you can see where I was trying to provide some guidance on best practices. You can see the difference of engagement right here. And I also think that people generally like a little light content. They, they don't need to read a 2000 word blog all the time. 
So don't feel that you need to pr produce big stuff. You don't. Um, and here's another example. Um, <laughs> so mm -hmm. here's here's a three thousand. This is a high one for me. So three thousand views of a post would be would be pretty high. Not not my highest, but like pretty darn high for me. Um, and then you compare that to eight hundred views of an article uh, or a post. So this post on the left is just text. It's just, hey, new grad. Like I was so frustrated with like hiring for this one role and how, you know, terrible um, it was an entry level job and how terrible new grads were <laughs> at the interview process. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, just do these five things. Don't be a dummy. And if you do these five things, you'll get a job. Easy. That post did really, really well. Con contrast that to we actually acquired a company, <laughs> mm -hmm. which I thought was like the biggest, most strategic news like of, of our year. Um, and nobody cared. <laughs> 800 mm -hmm. views. Yeah. So a lot of that is just the algorithm. Um, it doesn't like links, as you can see. Um, but, you know, posting this is better than not posting it. But you can see how powerful these text posts are. Okay, the big question, should I hard pitch on LinkedIn? Should I go for the hard sell? Is LinkedIn a um, basically a uh, pickup bar? The answer mm -hmm. is no, it is not. It, in fact, that is the least effective way to use this tool, okay? Um, nobody wants to be sold directly on LinkedIn, nobody. Um, they wanna be educated. Um, they don't want to be sold. So I'm going to compare two typical experiences. I get like a bunch. I'm sure you do. Everybody does on this call. Um, mm -hmm. But like you, I get a bunch of these every week. Here's the MO. Connection request. Yeah, I, I will accept 100% of the connection requests I get. 100%. Uh, that is my policy. Um, I then get an immediate pitch. An immediate, like literally an immediate pitch. And, there, and I'll explain how these these people do this. It's not that there's a human doing this. This is a robot, and there's tools that you can buy to do this. Um, but I get an immediate pitch, and then every on because like, robots aren't that smart. Every ten days, I get a stupid message from the guy again um, about something I don't want, right? And there's no unsubscribe feature, right? So. I get perpetually these these stupid messages until I tell the guy I'm I'm at, I don't want to hear from you anymore, which takes time for me. So usually I don't even bother. So that does not work in my. I don't think I've ever bought anything from anybody on LinkedIn who's used this approach. Not I, I not and I'll tell you how it, it works, but it doesn't work this way. Do this. This this guy nailed it. Connection request. Um, I get a thank you note connecting, which are kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, this guy engaged with me for three straight months, liked stuff, commented stuff, shared stuff, and then sends me a personal note a bunch of months later. Hey, really, really, you know, what, whatever, some stupid, like, you know, um, um, you know, cheap kind of compliment or whatever, but this this is the right path to engagement, okay? Um, because I'm connected with this guy, I'm gonna see all of this, the stuff that he does. And he's right up my alley. Like, I do I wanna double my MRR? Yeah, 100% I do. Like, what he's selling, I would buy. But I'm not gonna buy it off a, a, a LinkedIn message. I'm gonna buy it because his content is really, really good. He's just reminding me that he's there. This works perfectly. This is what you should model. This is a great approach on LinkedIn. Perfect. Yeah. Um, if you want to sell, and I'll explain what we do um, if it's of any value. But if you want to sell, get off of LinkedIn. If you know, if I know Michael Cummings and I know where he works, I go to that website. I download a plugin called Hunter.io. I type in Michael Cummings and it'll tell me Michael Cummings email address. Mm -hmm. 
I then take that email address and I email Michael Cummings outside of LinkedIn. That approach works, mm -hmm. but messaging in LinkedIn typically doesn't. Okay, any questions before we move on from that? No, this good. Okay, um, right on. So how frequently should I engage? Well, this is my cadence, okay? So you should come up with your own cadence. Um, I post at least twice a week, probably, you know, more. Um, I do 50 connection requests a week. Every human being I interact with in a business setting gets a connection request from me. After mm -hmm. every single meeting, I connect with them on LinkedIn. You're all going to get a connection request from me. Okay. That's like, it takes a half hour, an hour a day. I don't know what it takes, but that is the diligence that's required. So I, that's a personal thing. I connect with everybody that I ever interact with in a business setting. I do at least on average 50 like or comment engagements. So I do at least 10 a day. I'm on a boring call, go to LinkedIn, like, 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 engage, blah, blah, blah. I usually like a multitask on, on those kind of meetings where you're not, you're a passive participant. Um, I do at least five industry article shares and I always share my company's content. On the company page side, um, we tend to um, redistribute two industry articles a week and write one custom piece of content a week. week okay. um, and, and then do, um, you can do a hundred free um, company page invitations a month, so 25 a week. So we make sure we, we try to take advantage of that. You know, we talk about more about that. Uh, but set your own goals because mm -hmm. um, you have to be uh, um, intentional with this stuff. Um, content, there's tons of it out there. I mean, there's so much of it. You can just reuse it. It's awesome and, and recycle it all the time um, because it's LinkedIn is so temporal. Like I could... I could reuse the same post time and time again, every month. I could, and nobody will, <laughs> nobody will remember that I did it last month. So we have like, I don't know, like 50 blog articles or something. And we'll just kind of recycle them all the time. Um, you guys work with some really cool vendors. You know, you guys are redistributing some, some really cool tech. These companies are massive. They have like marketing departments in the thousands of people. They're constantly producing content. Reuse it. Follow those companies and reuse their content all the time, okay? You'll get cred for distributing it. Um, so do it. And when you share it, add your little spice, add, add your little flavor. So you can, you know, LinkedIn has a share little button mm -hmm. and then it allows you to add a little bit of a post to the share um, and, and just add your little bit um you know case study reference for example hey you know this company took advantage of this you know we were happy to implement this at this company um can't say enough about this product if you want to do x y and z like whatever like those are really easy things to do um try to build out a content calendar 60 days in advance and, and make it a task in your day uh, other examples, uh, hit your support desk. Uh, you guys all have like PSA or support systems. You guys are logging uh, cases from clients. Whoever's on that desk, ask them, what do people care about today? What are they complaining about? What are they having trouble with? And then write an article about it. Um, th that's a great source. And, and if you have knowledge articles, if you have a knowledge article database, redistribute some of that content. Um, you know, keep track of new product releases, pricing, licensing changes, industry events, just write about everything. Um, it's so easy to come up with content. This is an example of a content calendar we have every week. So, you know, the team does um, custom post. They, re, um, they, they tend to share a, a page on our website. Um, you know, they redistribute content. Um, so this is, you know, a typical week for, for our organization. 
Um, okay, another thing that I you know I find uh, talk about personal brand, the owner really important needs to be a voice. Mm -hmm. We talked about the company page. Um, if your owner is a reluctant kind of person, we talked about taking owner ownership of that account. Mm -hmm. You becoming the the voice of that account. But you should also try to build up your company uh, followers. Some really great analytics that comes out of this stuff. So mm -hmm. how do you build up company followers? Um, so when you see companies like, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know, Microsoft with hundreds of thousands of followers, Oracle, NetSuite, Google, whatever, the reason why they have someone, so many followers, number one, yeah, you know, they're big name, big brand or whatever. But mm -hmm. most likely it's because they post jobs on LinkedIn. When somebody applies to your job, they follow your page automatically. Um, so if you ever have any job openings, use your free LinkedIn job post. And then that's the quickest way to gain your followers. But then the question is, well, those people aren't going to buy your stuff. That's not how it works. The algorithm is, has an exponential impact um, if you have more followers. So the goal should just be to increase the number of followers, uh, regardless of whether or not those followers are your ideal customer profile. Um, easiest way to do it. Second is these invite connections. You can do a, if, if you're a company page super admin or a content, I th actually, I think you need to be a super admin. You have the ability to share company page invitations up to hundred for the organization, a hundred a month. So if you had, mm -hmm. let's say five or six company admins, uh, LinkedIn super admins in your organization, those five or six people can invite their connections to follow the page. So definitely hit your relationships with Microsoft and Google and AWS and all your distributors, your DISC, whatever, like make sure they're all following your company page, number one, and then hit, you know, uh, we talked a little bit before about building your networks up every time. Like what I typically do is when I add a connection within two weeks, I am inviting that connection to follow the company page. More often than not, people accept when they accept, you get the credit back. So it goes back into your piggy bank and every month you get a hundred. And then when the month crosses over to the first day next month, you start at a hundred again. So if you, if you haven't used October's credit, you lose them and you start at 100 in November. So try to take advantage of this every single month. Um, you know, you can just gain organic followers by creating awesome content. You know, it's not that effective, but it is effective. You can always notify employees as a way to promote that content. There's a little notify employees button. You can do it once a day. And so that asks employees to share the post that you just posted. And the least effective, well, it's, it's pretty effective because it works, but it's so expensive, but you can always just buy follower ads. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, wouldn't do it if I were you, but you can do that. Um, quick pause, any questions before I continue? No, I just, just right. want to make sure you save enough time, Mark, to get to the automation stuff there at the end. This yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you, there's LinkedIn groups. I would recommend everybody to join LinkedIn groups. If I don't know like anything about your organizations, but if you've got a specialization in a certain industry, a specialization in a certain region, join all the groups that your buyers would be part of. So chambers of com commerce or uh, whatever, I don't know. There's, there's tons of them out there. Uh, if they're industry specific, there's tons of industry specific, role specific groups, join them. And then you can contribute your opinions, ask questions, comment on other posts. You can tag and share information to groups in your posts. Um, there's a lot of ways you can take advantage of LinkedIn groups. Just don't spam the groups, mm -hmm. <laughs> not, not recommended. Um, LinkedIn events are also really um, effective. LinkedIn makes uh, events um, uh, a central part of their engagement. They're doing a lot of neat stuff with events. I tend not to use the LinkedIn events functionality, but I do promote the event we run. I, we use, you know, whatever, like we use Teams webcast to do our events, um, but we promote it on LinkedIn. Um, and 
you know, they allow you to do some neat collaboration. You can create polls, you know, it makes it easy to invite people to your event. It, um, LinkedIn's got some weird stuff with events right now where it'll promote your event um, within your network. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great tool. So if you're not doing webinars, webcasts, you know, maybe target like, I don't know, one 30 minute webcast a month just to kind of break in, get into that rhythm, that habit. And it could, you know, be on, you know, a million different topics. Um, but start, you can start using LinkedIn to promote those things. And, and don't worry if nobody shows up to your event. In fact, probably nobody will. That's okay. The content you that, you know, creating an event forces you to put on, and then what you can do with that video after is worth everything. So don't be discouraged. If one person shows up, make it the best event they've ever been to. You don't need a thousand people at every event. In fact, the content that comes out of those events has a great shelf life and you can use it a million times over. Um, okay, Sales Navigator. It's a thing, it's pretty cool. Um, if you don't have it, it's 80 bucks a month. It's probably one of the better data enrichment and, and company search tools out there. I would strongly recommend every organization have a license for it. If, for example, um, if Alex were to take over the uh, account of um, her boss, yeah. put it in Doug's name and then Alex can use it easy. Um, you can do some really cool searches. So uh, I don't know anything about Alex's business, but if you're an MSP in a certain you know region, you can find all the decision makers in that region and, and start targeting them um, with intent. Um, and makes it really easy. Um, what I, um, and it does some other neat stuff, like just some really cool presence notification if you're using Office 365 and have uh, Sales Navigator, I can show you really cool stuff. There's integration to CRM systems, which, uh, you know, um, it's a little bit one way for a bunch of privacy reasons. Um, but the thing I love most about LinkedIn Sales Navigator is this. If I look for a company, I just pick a random company, dealhub.io. This tells me who the decision makers are. I get that with LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So it helps me navigate the organization. I get insights about that company that I wouldn't get otherwise. It's worth every dollar every month mm -hmm. just for this. Um, so I'm always, we're always building our database up. We don't buy lists. We tend to curate our lists. We learn of a new account, we add it to CRM, we add the contacts using Navigator Search, we enrich the account and contact information with tons of information that comes out of LinkedIn. We do this all manually. And then we uh, add context to uh, an outbound sequence. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's our process. And LinkedIn Navigator is a key part of that. We also use you know, Zoom Info, Crunchbase, Inside View, like lots of content uh, enrichment uh, databases, but LinkedIn is probably the most important one. Okay, um, working with analytics. So when you do get a company page and you start posting, you get some really, really cool um, analytics information and you can see what kind of engagement's working here. So you can see anything in around the 3% is a pretty decent engagement. Um, that's kind of what you wanna shoot for, um, but it gives you some really uh, neat information there. Um, I took off all our competitors, but um, you know, I just cleaned it up just to provide a quick example here, but you can also track um, follower metrics and engagement uh, met metrics. Also really, really cool. So if you mm -hmm. have like four or five MSPs at, at, that are competitors, add them to your list and see how you're doing relative to uh, your cohort. Uh, running LinkedIn dads. If, um, if you guys have a bunch of MDF fun that you have nowhere to put, Put it in, put it in somewhere, put it in Google ads, put it in LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn ads are way more effective than Google ads. Um, you can see here that I've, um, I'm, I'm showing you our ads that are running. We've got two campaigns running right now. You can see the impressions. We're not driving conversions. That's more the nature of these ads. We don't have uh, con conversion form fills. Uh, you know, that's another conversation entirely why we're doing that. But, um, these work extremely well, especially when you combine ads with audience building. So both Google and LinkedIn allow you to put tags on your website, and then that allows you to do retargeting. So you can get people to hit 
um, your website. When they do that, LinkedIn and Google know who that person is with cookies. And then both LinkedIn and Google allow you to build audiences and then you can target campaigns to those audiences. That's called retargeting. Retargeting is extremely cost-effective um, uh, method of marketing. Um, hmm. And so if you do have any, M any uh, MDS spend, this is a, a great vehicle uh, to put it behind. Companies like Microsoft love this kind of stuff. I don't know why, they just love spending money on this kind of stuff. So this is great MDF uh, fodder. Okay, automating engagement um, really quickly here. Um, there are ways to automate um, a lot of your daily tasks uh, and engagement with people on LinkedIn. You can buy tools like this, Conversify, um, which will basically work with LinkedIn lists from Sales Navigator. So it's, you know, 80 bucks for that. I don't know how much Conversify is. The pricing's on the website, it's not that much. But you combine the two and you can basically automate like a robot all of your outreach. Um, I strongly recommend not to try to do the sales pitch through Conversify because mm -hmm. I don't feel it lands, but you can automate this stuff for almost no money uh, very, very cost effectively. And and build build up your network, build up the company's followers using automated engagement. This is probably one of the better tools in this space, but there are other ones you can figure out. Uh, um, you know what the landscape looks like for that, but this is a a pretty good one, very cost effective. Um, the last thing I'll say, I think this is the last thing. Um, LinkedIn could can easily be. Um, included into your outbound sequence. So there's one-to-many conversations and then one-to-one -one conversations. One-to-one -one is more of that account-based, account-centric kind of strategy. What's really, really effective now for finding um, new opportunities is one-to-one -one uh, outreach. Mm -hmm. um, so here is what's called a sequence. This sequence works extremely well. Um, and what it does here, what I'm showing you is a multi step sequence and the little numbers are the dates between each step and here you're um, incorporating credentialing emails voicemails auto reply emails linkedin interactions voicemails um, another email with a second value proposition auto third value proposition auto linkedin request risk voicemail closure email this is a perfect sequence so if you have a sales team out there and, you know, likely uh, no disrespect to salespeople, they're not great at time management. They have like, let's say 10,000 accounts or contacts they need to hit. Um, they're not effective at trying to reach them. Um, they might get through a couple hundred a week, but then they usually stop after the first mm -hmm. attempt. In marketing, it's the old adage, it's true. You need to hit people, you know, nine, 10, 11 times before they take notice and you need and it's more effective if you hit them with multiple mediums uh, email voicemail linkedin that that will be effective now coordinating that activity is really difficult but there are tools out there that help you coordinate that um, text mm -hmm. happens to have one there are tons of them out there um, but but um, but this stuff really really works well Um, Michael, time-wise, I have three minutes, so where mm -hmm. do I start? Um, this is what I would do. Uh, mm -hmm. These six things you could deploy very, very quickly. Uh, I say within a couple of weeks, you can build a good, good strategy for it. This is the order I'd attack it in. Um, yeah, this is just a little bit about us. Um, mm -hmm. I will leave. I know we're running out of time. I will invite you. So tech stack, uh, we work with software companies, technology companies, uh, starting to work with MSPs. We've got four MSP events coming up um, in November, 30 minute uh, webinars, not going to sell you anything. Uh, four ways that you can get your MSP um, sales and marketing machine humming. Um, and so you can check out our, uh, those four events on our website uh, or you can contact me anytime. Uh, email is mark with a C at techstack.com. That's let's it, Michael. Any, yeah, let's see if anybody's got any questions, but if not, I'm going to ask you to go back a couple of slides. Sure. Go back to the your ads where you had your actual data there. 
So that's actual data. So 1350 in Canadian money is not is what US? Thousand bucks. Thousand bucks and you got is it true that you get sixteen thousand four hundred and forty six people to look at that message? Yeah, so impression on LinkedIn is three seconds of viewing. Mm -hmm. So it's not the scroll really fast. They have to land for right. three three seconds. So, so to get 40, so people. in your mind, getting 54 click-throughs for a thousand dollars, is that worth it? It's borderline. Hmm. Um, this was throwing five grand at a wall and seeing what happened experiment. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm doing though with the people um, that are... Um, I would think the answer would be yes, honestly. Yeah, I well, I'm a, mm -hmm. you know, we're a small business, right? So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm prudent with where we spend money. I get way more value in an outbound sequence um, strategy than I would um, spending money with Google or spending money with LinkedIn. But yeah, this is not ineffective. And if it's free money, like if it's MDF money mm -hmm. and it's not coming out of your business, I would, this is where I would put it. Honestly, this is where I would spend an MDF money. Yeah. And then if you go to your next slide, the Conversify slide, is that the Conversify one? So what that does is, is what it would do is when you had your best practices up front in terms of the type of emails you would send out and type of messages, does this just do it automatically based on a uh, sales navigator search? So I could say my target market is, you know, law firm administrators in my marketplace, and I have a list of a hundred of them. Then I can, I, then I can use Conversify to trigger a set of events that are going to basically uh, reach out to them, ask them to connect with our best practice email, and then once they connect, tee up a couple of things for them to get like a value type engagement like right after yeah. that yeah a lot and of we, people use these things for selling they try to sell yes. um but i i wouldn't do that but you could use this tool very effectively it takes a lot of that human like there's a yeah. lot of like uh, mouse clicking that you don't have to deal with it so yeah yeah i think to this this to me would be something for everybody to consider if you're not doing something like this yeah, I, I think it works best with Navigator, obviously. So, you know, yeah. add 90 bucks a month to whatever this thing costs. Um, but it's yeah. pennies on the dollar, really. Yep. Yeah. And I think the other thing I would just do, and, and again, this is as much for my process as anything. I also think you want to make sure that your mix of content isn't overly reliant on other people's stuff, right? Because it takes away your differentiation. Right? So I think as we think through part of what I wanted to do is tee this up for like thinking about your marketing plan for next year is to think about what is the killer content that you need to have created for yourself versus what can you layer in from other sources, right? That's, that's complementary. That actually doesn't diminish the stuff you produce. Right. I think that's the kind of balance. I think it's important and all this stuff, but no, this has been great. I, I, I've, I've actually learned a lot. I think, I think it's the much more of, and then if you go to your last thing there, your last chart there, and we'll let everybody go. This is for me. And is, this is kind of what Telestack does basically. It's no, I'm sorry to go back to with the boxes on it. This one? Uh, one more back with the boxes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Two more big. So is this, can be automated. Can this be automated in most CRM systems, including Telstep? Um, no. You, okay. So in most CRM systems, you would need a CRM system which holds a contact and account information. Yep. And then you need to buy an add-on product that does this. So you know, Salesforce and then Outreach as an example. Okay. Um, now TechStack has this all in one and okay. I can explain how it works and why that's good and all that kind of stuff. But normally mm -hmm. it's CRM and then this thing on top. And when you say the auto reply, or I'm sorry, the curiosity voicemail, is that a voicemail left by like a sales representative? Yeah. So, um, you know, nobody picks up phones anymore, but everybody, everybody has a voicemail system that they ignore. But mm -hmm. the beauty now is that as you guys sell, I'm sure all of you guys have MSPs, have mm -hmm. a voice product that you sell. 
those voice systems transcribe <laughs> voicemail mm -hmm. as text messages. So it's mm -hmm. just another way to hit somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's a way That's to leave that message. Yeah. yeah it's been very good. And yeah, we I have think... like best practices built for what the content should be, what the voicemail should look like, follow up, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. We've built that into our product. So. Okay, cool. No, this has been awesome. So thank you for uh, the time. I, everybody usually has a, like a one o'clock meeting, so we're losing people, but uh, I'm going to give this recording out to everybody and to you if you want it, so you can slice it up and use it as your own content if you want to. Uh, but this has been uh, this has been awesome. Cool. Well, if, if it's okay with you, Michael, what I'll do is I, I, I can just send the PDF to the email that you sent a little bit earlier and people can okay. have at least the PDF to start. Okay. Sounds great, my friend. Thank you all. And Alex, I expect big things from you in LinkedIn in 2022. Yes, I know. I've been like logging it all the way, typing out my notes. <laughs> no, no, I think I, I really think Doug, you know, it's actually funny. But you, anybody else can leave. But it was funny. I, I met at the big, big uh, person. I won't tell their names, but I met somebody who was an owner in the market that competes with somebody that's an SDP. It's not Portland, right? And what I was, and I, nothing, nothing against this person, but I was saying, just as a human being, this is a different person than my, the owners that's in SDP, right? And I said, at some level, if you think about a discovery call that an owner goes on, like Doug goes on, the big differentiator is how Doug handles those meetings versus somebody else, right? Right, so yeah, me, that, Doug's, that's, Doug's brand is a lot. <laughs> yeah, and so I think that should be, that should be, because people now do most of the buying process outside of, you know, phone calls or human interaction, right? Until you get to the discovery call. We need to take Doug and put him in that same light, you know, in that in that part of the process, right? Yeah. So just you know, and I and I think if you if you literally got him in a room for, you know, half a day with a PowerPoint presence, you know, some questions that you just asked him, or you mm -hmm. even better get him and a client in the, in a for a half hour, right? I think right. you guys you, that would be really strong material for you guys. Yeah, that's um, trying. <laughs> it's hard to get him like pulled out of all the other stuff he's doing. No, I think he's got to, you know, just <laughs> I think he's, he's good once you once you sell him on it. He's good at doing it, right? Yeah, I think that's the honestly, thing. he's like he's totally like up for anything. Like he'll try anything. Um, yeah, as long as it's like fresh and new and not something everybody else is doing. It's well, that's just, all fun. Yeah. yeah. So. That's what, a little bit why, like I'd say, I think, I think, kind of, it's the whole notion of the average MSP being more average. You don't want to be sending out the same shit that all the other MSPs are sending out, right? right. In yeah. a weird way, you know. Yeah. And it's, and I think, I think, um, I think with a little upfront effort, I think the other thing Mark brought out too is having that all planned out. Right. You know, because I, I would say his plan, I could be wrong, but his plan that he just laid out, Mark laid out, is more, much more than most. Of them of us are doing right yeah i think having that like initial like big block of time for doug to just like sit down and do five different things with me yeah, yeah. it's a lot more effective than having to like pull an hour once a week no, or something. i think you just block it out for like a day like he, that's why i say if we build it in your marketing plan for next year and at the other thing i would look into i don't know if conversify is the best example but that having that automation i think is helpful too yeah, I'm definitely going to check into that. I was, um, I was kind of like poking around a little bit as I was listening, but I'm going to yeah. get into that and see how we might be able to. But I think a lot of that too is I think I think like I said, whenever Doug wants to, he can get as many clients as he wants to, you know. And I think it sounds like he's getting more like he wants. He's ready for that. You know? Yeah. That was yeah, great, I... Mark. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I... Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off, Alex. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to agree. <laughs> yeah. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's the, um, I think the, the back end of the presentation too is something that I, I think you, if you want to, I can get you in front of many, you know, we can even do a webinar for MSPs if you want to, you know, uh, you, you let me know how I can help you. Uh, yeah, I can sure. also connect you, you know, I do like, these people are from my own group, my own company. Uh, I do all their work with TBG, where we have some owners, they're kind of, they would be in the blocks of like five or six that are in a, a peer group. So you can present to them as well. Or if you want to do a webinar for MSPs, let me know too. I think, you, did you do one with the TBG already or? No, we haven't done it yet. Um, yeah. 
we're, we're, we're doing uh, four webinars in November independently yeah. of TBG, and we were going to target something with TBG in the new year. Yeah. Well, you got everybody's but, uh, emails from here. I can send you other, uh, I can send you the owner emails too if you want to. Uh, sure. Send That'd be great. The, That'd be uh, awesome. Yeah, that webinar. So. No, yeah, that's, that was great. Awesome. Um, yeah, sounds good. I have some other thoughts, uh, Michael, but we can, we can chat another time. Yeah, whenever yeah. you'd like to. No, no, Alex. I'm always, uh, I just no. want to. No, no, it's, it's not that. It's not that, Alex. It's more the. Uh, uh, I know we're over our one hour, so. Uh, I got time. Well, it's only eleven here on the West Coast, so. <laughs> well, yeah, it's nice to work outside. But uh, I think the other thing I wanted to say to Alex, I'm going to see Doug next week. I think. Yeah, next week. Is we just want to we want to we want you to have a good kick-ass 2022. I mean, you, you guys have had yeah. some rough times. So, and I think I think I think there's a lot you can do. To kind of hyper, you know, accelerate whatever results Doug wants. Yeah, I feel honestly, even just like with the team that we have, like the sales and marketing team that we have right now, I yeah. feel exponentially more confident in what we can execute next year versus where I was sitting at this oh, time. No, yeah. um, I think yeah, we're. Spots. Spots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you just got to, I take the spot. I think. Um, I think uh, it's mostly mind share for Doug. That's the main thing, right? So yeah. once his mind can get disconnected, detached de from what he's worrying about, we can uh, work on the other side of it. I have to say, though, I kind of enable that because of the fact that, like, in addition, obviously, like, you know, that I'm also Doug's assistant. So I tend yeah. to like make things easier on myself and push off our conversations to fit other things in. Um, so I gotta quit doing that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I'm glad you're on this. I think you, I was glad you're on this particular conversation because I think you guys can do a lot just in the in the LinkedIn arena. You know, you already have, but I think you can do even more. Yeah, I think uh, we're pretty like in the last year we've really had a lot more like social engagement and stuff like that since I've taken over doing that. Like, yeah and stuff like that um but yeah leveraging some of the automation and algorithms and things like that I think so yeah we're not tapped into that yet and i yeah. think we you guys got to get conversify <laughs> or something <laughs> like it yeah <laughs> yeah it's all, it's like you got this big pile of money just sitting there waiting to be mined you know that's yep. way, yeah. it's literally sitting there like a, like a gold in the ground yeah. all right well thank you guys cool. Thank you. Mark, we'll set up, a, set up the follow up time if you want to, Mark, to talk. Uh, if you, we need to talk about other stuff. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. Okay. Um, Mark. Do you have a calendar now? Uh, actually, I do. I'm going to be busy through. I get, I'm going to do one of my peer groups like next week. So yeah, it's probably let's, better let's to do it. To remember that. Uh, yeah, I was going to say or the week, so not next week, but the following week. So let me look at that. Okay. Um, the week of the first, I think. Yeah, the week of the first, I guess, if that's okay. Yep. Do you want to shoot a couple options? Yeah, I, I can do a Tuesday. Okay. What are you getting Tuesday? I'm pretty good on Tuesday. Um, I, just do, I don't like to meet really early, so I was going to say, are you East Coast either way, right? Either yeah. Way. Okay. You want to, I can do noon mine time, one years, was one option. All right. Okay, cool. I'll uh, you send I'll me that. Okay. Over. Yeah, I'll send okay. you that. Sounds good, dude. All right, man. Thanks for the uh, the opportunity. No, right. I'll... I think I think it's good for to just to to. I think you could do that exact same presentation for uh, an owners group, and I think in some ways it'd even be more appropriate for an owners group because some of these people know the 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 front stuff. They're probably familiar with it's it's, but owners wouldn't be. They wouldn't be as familiar with that stuff. Cool. All right, right bud. Thank you, to... sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.